maybe we go help out this stuck flooring truck where the guy said he doesn't have reverse and now he's stuck in front of my house. I have a solution for this. Where are my keys? I know what it's like not to have reverse. That's two new reverse buddies helping each other out. Today on Zero to Awesome, I am going to build the stupidest thing I've ever made. And that is saying a lot because I once made a display case for a pickle. Here's Zero to Awesome. We've been working on a pair of auction Polarises and they're looking pretty good. I am in the final stages of accessorization and I should be doing something useful like hooking up all the 12 volt wiring for the winch or the lights or the sweet new stereo system. But um, instead, I'm gonna do a different type of accessorizing, the pointless type. Now there is a piece of recovery equipment out there in the camping and the off-road world that's actually really cool. I think it's called the Angry Beaver. Angry? Called the Angry Beaver, and it's actually really cool. It's a shovel with this removable handle and teeth on the end of it, and it's brightly colored, and it's awesome. Except that it costs over $100. I don't know who would ever actually pay that much for a shovel. You'd have to be sick in the head. This is the part where if I can't find a picture of Steven holding his angry beaver or with his angry beaver in the background, I'm just gonna tell you that Steven has an angry beaver and I'm super jealous. But while I do not have an angry beaver, I have this. A broken, rusted old shovel that I found in my shed. I also have an ankle grinder and some spray paint. And by the time we're done with this, I'm gonna make it cooler than the Angry Beaver and much more free. First things first, let's clean her up. It's been a year and a half and I still apparently don't know how to put a mask on, right? Once you sand away enough rust and cement, you can see that at some point this was green and this rivet that holds the head of the shovel, the shovely end, onto the sticky end is nice and solid so I don't have to drill it out and put a bolt through there. But I feel like I'm probably going to try and mount this somewhere back here sideways and it's a bit too long. So let's make it shorter. I feel like that's good length for a knockoff beaver. So let's get out the shovel saw. In this case, the shovel saw looks a lot like a circular saw. Where is my mark? That is not straight at all. I would say it has cleaned up pretty well compared to where we started. But now the most challenging of the entire thing to figure out where the teeth go. I'm gonna get a marker and a tape measure and actually measure this out 
And then I think just cut it out with an angle grinder. It's time to measure and measure again, measure again, measure again, and hopefully cut just once. Yeah, I can do this. Two and a half. Two and a half plus half of a quarter. Two and two and five. What's half? What's half of five and one quarter? I don't know what I'm doing. I think we have it. Time to bust out the angle grinder and hope this tape does not come off as we start cutting it. The tape actually held on there just fine while cutting, and I think that came out there pretty good. I'm going to go to town with a file, clean it up, and then, well, since the Polaris is covered in Raptor liner, I mean, I've got a Raptor liner my shovel also. Who I almost poked a little hole in that. my spray can Raptor liner dry overnight and it came out pretty good. Originally I was going to cover the Raptor liner with some spray paint. You can paint right over this. Maybe paint the blade or the fork, spoon, the spoony end. Paint the spork end of my shovel one color and paint this a different color. I think I changed that up a little bit. Probably just gonna paint the pointy end so people know it's pointy, stay away. And then I think we're just going to stain this because cleaning it up with the sandpaper, it came out so good. But before I stain that, I need to accessorize. So this is just stencil material that I cut out on my little old lady crafting machine. And it works really well. I've never tried to stencil off wood. I'm always doing this on something like metal. So hopefully it sticks and it doesn't bleed through. But we're gonna tape this off find a good color spray paint, and then we will have our name. Okay, maybe a little overspray, but it's a shovel, so let's let that dry. It hasn't been drying very long, but I think the paint is reacting with the stencil I used and wanting to peel itself off. In fact, my little armadillo up here, oh, armadillo, yeah, let's, let's peel off the name and you'll see what that means. There we go. Even though I'm kind of making my own angry beaver, I can't call it that, so this is the, Upset armadillo. The stencil didn't really work that great. There was definitely some bleed through where the stencil peeled up or where there was a lot of grain on the shovel. So I'm probably gonna sand it a little bit. And then I want to protect the wood. I wanna put some not stain, not polyurethane. I just wanna put something on it to keep it from turning gray and nasty. So I actually did something we never do here, which is an experiment. I took the piece of shovel handle that I cut off put some paint on it and once this dries I'm going to wander down to that end of the garage to my collection of various stains and sealants and wood oils and see what actually works without you know causing the paint to rub off. So once this dries it's sealing time and then mounting time because we got to mount this upset armadillo on my Polaris. I cleaned up the paint that bled through the stencil with a razor blade knife. Cleaned up eh, pretty well. And then my paint was still a little bit tacky, so I hit it with the heat gun. But also more importantly, 
my experiment worked. I used some of my fine Yachtsman teak oil and when I put it on here, it doesn't take the paint off. So we're gonna oil this bad boy up real quick. So we have cut out our angry armadillo. We have wrapped or lined it. We have accessorized it. Oh, I'm sorry, not angry armadillo, upset armadillo. Armadillos aren't angry creatures, but it's not done yet. We need to find some way to mount it onto the Polaris. And for that, I already have an idea. I used these brackets to mount my light bar. Get it? It's a bar with lights on it. And wouldn't you know, it actually came in a two pack. So I think with these bolts and my extra brackets, we're gonna mount this guy on a tire carrier back here. So it's going to be a tire and shovel carrier. That seems dangerous. I have a little bit of bad news. My upset armadillo is not gonna fit where I originally wanted to install it on the back of my tire carrier, but in failure, which that wasn't a failure, I'm not drinking pickle beer, in failure comes great opportunity because I found an even better place to mount it, right here on the tailgate. Check this out. I mounted my little roll bar hangers right here in the middle of my custom built tailgate. And then wouldn't you know it, she fits kind of like a glove. I'll get the hang of how it goes on there. Couple more washers, some locking washers, just because, you know, if you're going up a hill, you really don't want to upset armadillo to come loose. That might upset the dillo a little more. And then look at that. I think this is actually um, a much cooler place to mount my completely ridiculous spork. I mean, upset armadillo. So if you like what you see, Subscribe, hit the thumbs up, leave a super angry comment. And on that note, I'm gonna leave you with some super sexy slow motion footage of my sweet armadillo. I'm sorry, Big Papa Pickle. I called you stupid. You're not stupid. You keep me, you keep me company out here a lot. You're my buddy. Hope I don't have to eat you one day. Ugh.